Hi all, welcome to another King's Crusher radio show. This is Tuesday, 10 past 9. I'm just going to say, so this is uh, streaming to PlayChat server and YouTube. We're going to carry on looking at some amazing games of Gary Kasparov this week. I've seen a couple of these a lot of times before and I've always been impressed. This one is Kasparov against John Nunn in the Luzerne Olympiad of 1982. So John Nunn had apparently written a book on the Benoni uh, defence, was playing that quite a bit at the time. Kasparov uh, may have done some deep preparation. Let's have a look at the game. D4 from Kasparov. Nunn played knight f6 c4 e6 we have knight c3 and now the Benoni defense was played c5 we have d5 e takes c takes d6 let's actually uh, make sure we've got live book connect and let's add a convention by the way okay so knight f3 and e4 are the two main played moves here Kasparov plays e4 after g6 uh, this was uh, quite a rare move I believe at the time but this has really been made very popular by this game this is like a key game which maybe dented the popularity of the Bodoni defense actually somewhat because this is a very very sharp continuation now uh, from white very very sharp f4 uh, so we have bishop g7 and this move bishop b5 check disruptive check very annoying for black uh, for those of you that are not aware knight bd7 runs into a problem uh, tactically you see this pin you see this e5 technically white should be doing uh, well here with a big advantage technically but it is a bit hair raising possibilities it goes like this white should end up with an advantage anyway because of that pin and there's loads of you have to know your stuff there actually it's a very very sharp line very very sharp there's also the possibility for example bishop takes c3 uh, changes it a little bit but anyway so knight bd7 in a nutshell is known not to be in theory that good on bishop d7 this is even rarer actually than knight fd7 knight fd7 is recommended but let's have a quick look bishop d7 e5 again is dangerous uh, for black this position is just uh, very nice uh, for white perhaps engine suggestion is actually to take this here and then castle and look at how the center is it's poised quite aggressively and more pressure can be put that position is just basically unpleasant for black as well so basically this is a very critical move okay it's kind of compelling knight fd7 now potentially black is going to gain uh, a tempo gain with a6 on this bishop and if the bishop say went here then another one maybe but this is clamped down on now with the move a4 which is the most popular move to just clamp down on a6 and b5 later uh, now against this usually players with black play just casting here and this this is a line which seems popular nowadays just casting for example kind of transposing actually potentially into our game though with knight a6 the, this this continuation is interesting but um okay in the game in this game we see an immediate uh, knight a6 sort of castling immediate knight a6 knight f3 
and the knight actually goes to b4 here it's of castles a6 and you might think well surely the bishop will just go back in this position do you really want to give up that light square bishop here interesting actually the engine suggestion is just to drop back the bishop so either c4 or d3 as you might expect d3 actually does lose the bishop potentially but this position yeah it's just about equal this position uh d3 is not too terrible but uh if we want to preserve the bishop bishop c4 let's let's say this position So with knight f6, black's got some pressure on d5 here actually. The knight is doing a job of discouraging e5 here. And you know, maybe there's a little bit of uh, play, you know, knight h5. If you know e5, I think black, yeah, is even better shape, knight g4. Maybe taking here. Yeah, this is not, not particularly hot. Okay, so, but anyway, in the game, it seems, yeah, this is a really interesting move. Very interesting move that is played. Bishop takes d7. So why would Kasparov want to give his bishop here up so readily? The engine evaluation is actually in black's favor doing this it actually preferred moving the bishop back to c4 or d3 this is quite fascinating but it's changing its tune at quite high depth that actually this isn't so terrible so what is it about this what, what is this doing there are two ways well you don't, unless you want to take with the king there are two ways that black can recapture if black takes with the queen what's the problem The problem might be similar to the games actually might be similar that f5 might be a decent move in this position might be uh, with bishop takes d7 white has damage control of blacks f6 which means a move like f5 followed later by bishop g5 is threatening f6 this is a very interesting idea the f6 square with bishop takes d7 very interesting this f6 square we see bishop takes d7 now f5 so the idea bishop g5 how dangerous is this black just castled black just castled here we have bishop g5 so what about this f6 well black if he moves his queen where does black move the queen wouldn't it just allow f6 slight improvement slight nuance here you can kick the queen first and then play f6 and look at this who wants a bishop like this it does seem to be a very simple undertone to this whole bishop takes d7 i don't know how many of you have seen this game before and how mysterious this might have been or if i'm missing something to say but bishop takes d7 let's see am i providing a convincing argument here is it interesting on stream i mean what do you think about this Uh, yeah, so sorry in this position after a6 bishop takes d7 with the idea of f5 with bishop g5 Yeah, black by taking out that knight has punched at f6. So, okay, we get this position Yeah, where black plays f6 But this goes back to the classic uh, Benoni problem this d6 pawn is the classic Benoni problem. Yeah, the bishop drops back to hit d6 now and this bishop still has been hemmed in so how easy is it to defend d6 the thing is say say the bishop 
see the bishop move back or even here the classic recipe can be used knight d2 to torch for d6 this is this is potentially dangerous here though there's a technicality actually knight d3 because we've interrupted that so it might not be entirely bad can we improve can we improve on knight d2 here note that this is kind of resourceful potentially to hop in mm, might not be necessary let's have a look again might not be necessary this position I think white can slowly play b4 knight c4 and still put some pressure on black maybe even also clamp down on the dark squares here yeah this, the engines give this a slightly better for white but it's not so it's not all doom and gloom it seems uh if bishop e8 yeah how easy is it to get access to d6 actually how easy This has given us like one of the top tries actually it seems strange to allow the knight into e5 but um yeah it seems interesting but okay in the game g takes f5 was played just giving up the d6 pawn and it seems a little bit controversial to do this if we give up the d6 pawn isn't this weak and isn't this weakens because this knight is not supported then if these two guys go so g takes f5 we have bishop takes d6 so the idea is to discover an attack on the bishop tactical very tactical but maybe this is a mistake this could be a key mistake here actually bishop takes a4 when black gives up that light square bishop you know this sort of stuff might be more dangerous maybe this is an important guardian of the f5 square it's like when you give up a light square bishop in a lot of sicilian positions and white gets a big knight on d5 it's not something you want to do feeds basically a, a potentially aggressive knight outpost so in this position it seems more accurate might be rook e8 might be more accurate to play rookie eight let this pawn drop this position is is perhaps more interesting than the game so countering this attacking that might be more interesting than the game and again there's resources for black apparently like f5 this looks crazy what's going on here well there's things like this there's resources for black black might be fine here So this is a critical moment where John Nunn may have underestimated his light square weaknesses with this bishop takes a4. It's tactical for sure and it looks completely mad to allow c5 to drop without a fight for b4 but apparently apparently this is possible to play rook e8. It, is, it does seem to be possible. What, what would white play here? now if e takes then that's different a knight's not coming with venom to f5 then maybe bishop a4 here this tactic is is actually fairly okay here but in this variation in this version where there's a lively there's an aggressive knight outpost potentially this looks like positional positionally very suspect very easy to say this in retrospect of a game but it looks positionally very suspect because white is happy to get that knight square bishop with this now menacing knight outpost after knight h4 a knight on f5 is one of kasparov's favorite places for a knight outpost he said that quite explicitly that in his attacking games he loves the knights on f5 but this is just a super mighty knight because it's blocking in the bishop as well by its own pawn it's blockading that pawn which is hemming in the bishop it's supporting things like queen g4 it's supporting the past pawn in the position it's that's a terrible thing if that knight gets to f5 
But black here is helpless against the knight coming to f5. What can he do about it? He grabs a pawn. So we have this gigantic knight on f5 now with tempo on the queen. Queen d7 is played. Where else? Where else? If e7, there might be things like, no, e7, we just take the queen. <laughs> on c7, pardon me, d6. And now if queen c6, we've got knight e7 jet. This knight's already a monster. It's already a monster on f5. This is just terrible. Well, where's the queen going? Where's the queen going? There's queen g4 here. This is terrible, knight h6. It's a monster knight. So queen d7 was tried. The rook here, is, although it's looking at the rook, the rook's actually defended by two pieces. So this knight is actually free to move, which it does. It takes on e4. Now threatening, knight takes c5 up, with rook takes b4 to follow. Does black have time to defend that c5 pawn? He plays actually king h8. So what happens if b6? Actually, there's something white can do to transfer resources to the kings. There's a key move here, which is actually, from an engine perspective, quite crushing. We're talking plus six. I wonder if he can spot the key move to build up an attack here. So white play here. What would you play if I gave you 20 seconds? A really super attacking move. This is a variation of the game which didn't happen. White play here. Two hundred points if you can get it. When I pour this water, not Diet Coke by the way, water. <laughs> I've been off the Diet Coke for several months now. I don't regret it. So white play here. What would you play with white? White playing. Any ideas? Not, not, oh, hang on, was Rook F4 mentioned? That looks as though it might be dangerous. Um, but I could probably just play this. And if here, well, we can take off that knight. No, better not use that Rook because it's playing a supporting role if we did want to get onto the G file. There's a better way. There's a better Rook to use. Rook A3, just use this one. Let this one support F5 and bring this one to G3. That third rank is clear, crystal clear. So things like rook g3 are on the cards. So here we can either go to g3 or h3, but g3 is pretty good. And if here, then we could switch to h3, threatening this. What does black do here? If this, we can go all in, crush, 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 crush. Well, you get the picture. There's no need to explain this. So Rook A3 is making use of the fact. It's celebrating that the Rook is playing a supporting role of that beautiful knight and just let the other Rook do the work. Just needs its fellow Rook to come in. Yeah, Rook A3, crushing. But uh, okay, in the game, yeah, maybe because of things like this, we see King H8. Possibly this is designed against Rook A3 in some way. If rook a3 here, it's still actually quite bad. All, all the variations are actually pretty bad here. Say so queen takes d5, queen g4. This this is really bad. 
It's still really bad, <laughs> actually. Yeah. So King King H8 was played. But here, the rook doesn't even have to go to a3 now. An even stronger move exists than rook a3, which is knight takes c5, just undermining, hitting the queen, undermining the b4 knight, the poor b4 knight. And it's after this move that actually John Nunn resigns. 21 moves, near miniature, by 20 move standards, near miniature, 21 moves, Olympiad. Devastating. Why? You might ask. Ask. The thing is, after Queen takes d5 as example, so if Rook takes, then Queen takes his check, and Black would be fine, right? That's not the idea anymore. If Queen takes, we play this, then we play Knight e6, which winning the exchange because we're hitting the rook and, and the two knights are working together like these two rooks could have been working together two knights are working together in this variation yeah something like this we can just simply win the exchange with big advantage yeah by the way rook a3 is also <laughs> is is also dangerous here as well for example queen g4 fretting the bishop if here rook h3 this is just mega dangerous because what we have here are our frets like rook takes h7 and queen h5 mating it's pretty desperate if here say queen f3 where's the bishop go say here then we still have horrible stuff lurking around like this so where does the bishop go if it goes back there again this is just lurking around black would have to it, it's crazy but black is is in dire straits here this position he'd end up losing material anyway so even you know rook a3 is winning as, as previously mentioned this is like winning material with nothing else it's such a crushing position now when I initially saw this game I thought what on earth how did this game really work what what was the bishop the bishop takes d7 is quite a surprising move but um, it seems that black yeah was suffering both on d6 and f6 after that bishop takes d7 move early on in the game quite fascinating bit of a shocker for the uh, the new book author on, on the benoni it wasn't a great advert for the book okay let's go on to another game i hope you got something from that was that good good we're on to another game In the same year, we're going to another game in the same year. So this game is against Tigran Petrosian. Yes, the past world chess champion Tigran Petrosian, which Gasparov had suffered a couple of defeats, which I video annotated on the King's Cross channel. If you want to check out the whole series, actually, I have video annotated these encounters before. Trojan's got an exquisite style, really. <laughs> he didn't like the weight of being world champion, apparently. He enjoyed it more when he wasn't, apparently. But uh, he he got there through basically having these matches where most of the games were draws, but he would win the odd one and just win the entire match. <laughs> so he's, he's, a, he's a great... Uh, <laughs> Playing from the point of view of not losing he just didn't like to lose it wasn't apparently in his personality to lose maybe when he was younger he took some risk and you see some attacking games but a lot of his games yeah they were like really really solid play prophylaxis exchange sacrifices as a means of secure, getting really secure positions so Tigram chosen hard to beat 
and Kasparov had over-attacked him in previous encounters and suffered greatly to lose, in fact, a couple of games. So Kasparov wanted revenge. D4 in this game. There's a medical undertone, though, that has been told to me on YouTube, which is Petrosian, like Tao, did have health problems, suffer health problems. And um, so you've got to map that on. If you look at their results and performance, you've got to map their current state of health as well through these games. And apparently it wasn't that great in this game. Um, yeah, like, uh, yeah. Check on Wiki for details. Um, so anyway, Petrosian played knight f6. We have c4, e6, knight f3, bishop b4 check. Uh, this is a Bogo Indian. Bogo Indian. <laughs> Bishop D2. Named after <laughs> Bogolodzibov. <laughs> Bogolodzibov. Don't want to say that name too much. I think that's how it's said. Queen E7 was played. Uh, so Queen E7. <laughs> Bogolodzibov saying. When I win with white, it's because I'm white. When I win with black, it's because I'm Bogolodzbo. Fine, that's the classic quotation from him. So anyway, carrying on. G3. G3. Now, the main move, apparently, seems to be knight c6 in this position. Knight c6. This is worth maybe pointing out. If we get a position like this, for example, here... I think it's fairly safe waters, fairly safe waters for black, this sort of position. But in this game, in this game, we have bishop takes d2 check and off the queen takes d2. Yeah, here usually again, knight c6 appears to be quite frequent visitor. For example, like this, solid d5. This position has been known to be equal in quite a lot of games, equalish. But uh, black here castled bishop g2. Hmm. <clears throat> Now, d6 is, is quite common, it seems. For example, like this, with e5 black playing a dark square strategy. You see this dark square strategy? It's quite uncommon for black to be doing a dark square strategy. But this is a common way of playing it. So if d5, you get you know these dark squares like c5 you play around with. So this is an interesting treatment of the Bogle Indian. Bogle Indian. But uh, here, actually, Actually, <laughs> it might be the safest thing to pursue a dark square strategy instead of a white square strategy in this particular position. The problem with a white square strategy involving d5, fine, it seems to clamp the e4 square, but there's a few problems with this. It's letting white potentially use this c fold later more easily, more easily. Uh, white castles and actually probably black shouldn't play d tank c4 like in the game but play a move like rook d8 this seems to be quite popular to play in this position rook d8 if black's going to pursue a light square strategy of locking down the e4 square i think that that possibly there's an argument to be made not to give white too much initiative and to use this c file so if we have this position this looks fairly stable yeah even if we block the c pawn i know it looks a little bit outrageous but if we reach this position a light square strategy looks fairly stable here fairly stable bishop d7 this has apparently been played before it's been seen in a few games this sort of thing Maybe even c5 later. And you'll notice in this variation that the bishop doesn't seem to be terribly tortured, right? But, yeah. So rook d8 seems to be the stable move of choice, theoretically. At least 
games in line but with rook d8 but here we see d takes c4 and overall this has been known to have a good advantage for white a small advantage for white because white now doesn't even have to move this knight to get this pawn i'm not even sure this is a good move actually well it can be challenged if if we got this position black would be happy perhaps happier than what was played which was knight sorry ouch oops pardon me uh oh which was knight a3 here knight a3 was played here to try and get this pawn the problem one of the problems with this position is this c8 bishop and also the c file here again uh rook d8 has been uh rook, rook d8 has been seen before but uh in this game we get c5 Explorer takes on c5 queen takes we see rook a c1 and if you look a lot of well this c8 bishop is is a potentially big problem piece here uh this this is a problem as as well as that c file which might the, you know there might be it might be dangerous for black if, if bishop d7 is played i mean this looks very dangerous um so we see knight c6 knight takes c4 queen e7 and one of the only black pieces is active is challenged knight f5 e and after knight takes yeah it's i mean every move needs to put on the screw to the hip but it seems as though black doesn't have too many choices here look at white's pieces they're quite harmonious and a lot of pressure on the queen side if black plays like a forcing move there's actually knight takes c6 hitting the queen queen a5 this is good for white this is good for white look at that it looks like torture on the dark squares sorry so knight f5 we see knight takes e5 have I done something with my mouse? Behave, mouse. <laughs> knight f5. Knight takes e5. Knight takes e5. So white's got uh, a very dominating looking position already. If we look at it, this, this is a classic problem. This this bishop on c8. It's a classic problem. How do we actually uh, get it out here? how what does black do in fact uh chosen played a move which to blunt the light square bishop and encourage the self blocking of this bishop with e4 if that knight's gonna go so he's covering that entry point we see just rook fd1 though and now knight b6 potentially black is going to kick this knight with f6 so that's the idea one of the ideas is to be able to kick the knight away from that out that outpost square uh, but there's a slight snag here uh, we have queen a5 and there's huge pressure on black's position here if for example black played g6 actually if he plays f6 one of the points of queen a5 is revealed actually you know there's this pin on a7 knight c4 would threaten knight takes b6 yeah and if knight takes then also another point of the queen is that it also supports rook c7 what does what does black actually do here if he plays like b6 yeah, he's loosening that diagonal. The queen just steps back and again threatening rook c7 and the, and the rook. This would be horrible. This infiltration here would be horrible. Be winning at least that pawn and then, and then carrying on with queen c7 would be like torture. 
So queen a5 is multi-point move actually. Queen a5 is a very strong move, facilitating not just this, but also rook c7 in some lines. And if, uh, yeah, bishop d7, I think that's a total disaster. Knight takes rook c7. And if here, I think we'll just power on the pressure with queen b5 on that pin. And yeah, that pin is just end of game for black. I think ultimately it's end of game. Um, yeah, it's going to be end of game. So no, the queen a5 move is so annoying, so annoying. So it prevents f6 in effect. It's actually preventing f6. Ah, so this move g6 is played instead, which is not a move you really want to play. Weakening dark square, still leaving that horrible knight on e5. Okay, so one point of g6, I, I believe, if we look at rook d8, yeah, knight, knight c4 here, you know, there's back row issues as well. So may, maybe it is to try and potentially play rook d8 without weaker back row. But here we see rook d3 now. And... Uh, this, this is very, very interesting because the rook on d3 is not connected with any check. And when it was on d1, then rook d8 might be threatening a check. But in this position, if rook d8 is played here, then queen c5 is powerful. Because remember, this is not check now. And it's challenging the queen. If here we just take the rook, this position is horrible for black. Look at that, f7, horrible. It would be it would be devastating. Uh, so basically, rook d3 is quite a nifty way of saying to black that you know I've got rook d8 covered now. I can play queen c5 if you play rook d8. So Petrosian is playing a very passive position, and Kasparov is playing. Very positionally, this is this is quite unlike his tactical style. He's demonstrating he can put his positional hat on and squeeze the opponent's counterplay to death. This is like one of the most impressive early Kasparov counterplay removal games that you'd think it's being played by Karpov, right? But you know, this is Kasparov killing potential moves in their inception. You know, you know the Terminator is going back in time, <laughs> killing, <laughs> killing the mother. You know. Anyway, so no, uh, sorry, killing aside, it's killing all the moves in in their inception. Though there's no rook d8, there's no knight bishop d7. This bishop still suck on c8. This is a dead counterplay position. So it's one of the uh, and, and against Petrosian of all people to do this early you know game example where Black is virtually you know dead here. His position is virtually dead i don't know if you'd agree with that would you agree that black is uh black lacking counterplay would you would you agree just yes or no will be on there on the stream <clears throat> okay so petrosian plays uh knight d5 Possibly with the idea of b6 with tempo and then bishop b7. If he can get away with that, you know, if white fell asleep at the will, then, uh, say, say, say h3, we can imagine black uh, trying to sort of uh, get back in the game. You know, maybe bishop a6 and be, you know, potentially alive again. You know, but that's not going to happen, right? That's not going to happen. Because Rob's not going to play h3 here. He blocks his own bishop just to kick that knight away. Uh, just just the question b6 here, because you might think, well, the bishop's blocked. Can we not play b6? The thing is here, queen d2, disposition, where does the knight go here? Where? Here? We've got things like knight c6. And actually, black is in trouble. Again, in this kind of scenario, 
there's on the nasties blacks just getting completely pushed back and pinned again this is just horrible to be pinned like this horrible that'd be disgusting if you're losing material like that so yeah it doesn't seem as though although he's succeeding in blocking white's bishop it's not even a big deal for b6 it doesn't justify b6 here it's not it's not happening with b6 so we have knight b6 the knight just going back also by the way in this position it should be noted that queen b4 doesn't work there's a good tactic here can you see the good tactic for white white to play a very simple but effective tactic in this position that white can play 100 points if you can get it easy one what does white play here can you see i hope hopefully, hopefully you can Might play here. Come on, you guys! You can all get it. You can all get it. Yeah, just rook takes d five. Come on, rook takes d five. It protects the queen. <laughs> just wins a piece, yeah. So that's not possible. Queen b four, not possible. So yeah, I've chosen reduced to knight b six. But yeah, he did block in the bishop to his credit. But the bishop finds a new diagonal. Bishop f1. Again, let's have a look at f6 here. Can we not challenge the outpost? This wasn't played. f6 wasn't played. Rook e8 was played. But if we try f6, knight c4 again. This is not so pleasant. We're threatening this. If it takes then this is dangerous yeah this this kind of thing is hitting the, the bishop and this is just horrible if we we can pl slightly improve though there here with bishop d7 maybe just to lose a pawn for a bit of freedom would be best and actually honestly a chosen on a better day might have done this possibility should have sacked at the pawn yeah I think f6 should have been played here that that is the continuation to head for in this position get some liberation the price of liberation if it's a pawn it's a pawn yeah this is this is what should have been aimed for if we look at this position a little bit more I mean there's actually also two pawns attacked it's not so easy now the bishops come and undefended this if here but i can't take this rook c7 is devastating on the seventh rank that's the thing so white would still be technically better but you know there's a bit of work to do right this is the this is what black should have played f6 but chosen maybe not total peak form plays rookie eight now so i think that's that's actually a mistake really rook dd1 is played and white can take time now uh to do a very uh interesting plan here uh well <laughs> The plan is essentially to remove one of black's better pieces which is the queen and we see this now uh the rook just goes back as though chosen just waiting if he plays f6 here knight c4 is strong here uh if knight takes i think we can just uh we can actually just take here again threatening rook c7 and this mechanism comes into play again this infiltration uh this this is not nice 
if rook d8 let's have a quick look at this this position is good for white maybe rook c6 it's just tying black down or infiltrating on c7 or even d6 so anyway so Petrosian in the sides okay he doesn't want to commit to f6 he just plays rook f8 But now a little move which <laughs> basically uh, <laughs> doesn't appear to do much. King g7 we see now. And another little move, b3, just saying, well, wh what is black doing in this position? King g8, a4, again. Are these slight improvements for white? <laughs> okay, uh, black committed here to rook d8, which kind of loses immediately. If he plays rook e8 now, what's going to happen is it's something like this queen b5, then a5, the knight's going to move somewhere. Where does the knight move? It's actually lost, isn't it? It's lost. The knight here. There's no a6 queen takes. No, we just we just snap it off. So that's Kasparov's little plan here. He's just he's just preparing very slowly. You know, a5. If black did nothing, yeah, we just play queen b5, looking at d7. So nothing's going to use d7, right? And we just play a5. Yeah, he, he very slowly did that. You might think, hold on a sec, did he do that sadistically? Did we just witness sadism? Why couldn't he have done that in like, like more optimally with like A4? This is a good question. Because look, we reached the same position, right? You know, here, we reached the crushing, crushing finish there. A4 immediately, let's just, just check this out. A4 immediately maybe f6 here with that pawn sack in mind like before but under slightly more favorable circumstances yeah more favorable circumstances than before so the way Sparov has played it it looks like pretty sadistic what he's done and let's just just check this out again he played a3 that so that version of the pawn sack here is not so good these pawns are protected and actually white can even play bishop b5 with this pawn actually protected on a3 this is a better version of events because uh, there's no bishop takes e4 rook d7 and we're coming down to the seventh rank or winning the queen here immediately we just win the queen if we want uh, but even better just to crash right down the seventh rank keep don't let black keep the queen and just do this this is totally winning so yeah that's that this is a very very safe way what Kasparov's done it looks sadistic but it is a very very safe way of creeping to play a5 without this f6 and pawn sack resource it seems yeah so rook d8 so Petrosian doesn't want to wait for that he plays rook d8 but this is just gone now because white has a crushing move in this position can you see what white plays here white play here it's the final move of the game can you see what white plays
Any ideas? All right, I'll show you. Uh, White just plays Queen C5. Yeah, he welcomes uh, this position. Um, even though you might think there's a tactical point here that Queen takes this ball. Black resigned here. Black resigned. If he plays Queen takes, check. Now, if King G7, we just we're just winning material. No, that's not possible. So the the point here would be Queen F8. But here, white gets a big advantage anyway because of this infiltration with rook c7. Note how this knight has been completely restricted. We see that sometimes in Magnus Carlsen games, a restricted knight. Magnus is making sure a knight hasn't got any prospects. But with this rook on the seventh, this bishop is also dead. This is a dead position for black. If he moves the pawn, we've seen this before. We use the check. We pick up. We take time to pick up f6. And black's going to have to lose even more material now to get his pieces out. Otherwise white's going to be playing things like bishop b5 and shut down black's position. So if knight d7, yeah, even more material is lost. And it's just like two pawns down, it's helpless. Yeah, so queen c5, there's no real defense here. Rook takes is not check. Call me. Rook takes is not check because we have the bishop on f1. So actually, we can just take the queen. Yep, just take the queen. Doesn't matter about this because then there's mate in two check and then a mate. This rook never saw the light of day. Yeah, so queen c5, whatever way you cut it, is is crushing here. This is. Also, the top engine move in the position, queen c5. So this was a positional game. Something went really badly wrong. Black didn't use his pawn sack liberation option. He should have done. And um, yeah, just got basically run out of any counterplay. Okay, I hope you got something from these two games. I hope there were a good two games. We've got other games coming next week for Xbox. Two games good, yeah. The two games were good. I don't want to overload you guys or me, so uh, keep it fresh. Have a good week. Maybe comments or questions, likes on the video, appreciated. And see you next week. Thanks very much.